In this video, we're going to go through and set up to where we can change what optic we are looking at. So last, in the last video, we set up interpolation for aiming. In this one, we want to set it up so when I press a key, I want to be able to switch to aim at the top optic, and then the right optic, and then back to this one we are currently looking through. So that's how we're going to go through. We're going to set up an input event. So when we press a key, we want to call a function on our character here. And that will go ahead and in turn call a function in our animation instance to update our new site position. So let's go ahead and create that function in our character here. So let's do, let's link those together and we'll do another one down here. So blueprint callable, and it's gonna be void. Uh, let's do switch, or let's change it. Let's do cycle optic. And that's actually all we need in there. Generate the implementation. And now we just gotta pretty much call it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna close down the editor, relaunch the project. Okay, once that's open, we wanna go ahead and open up our character here. We can copy this mouse event and paste it and just change the input to be a, just a random key. Let's do something like T. So when we press T, we want it to cycle. So we're gonna off a of pressed, we're gonna do cycle optic. Compile save. And I'll just do a save all, and that's pretty much all we have to do from the blueprint side. So in cycle optic, we want to change where we have, where is it? Here it is, where we have current optics. So we have an array of optics. We want to iterate through it and select the next one. So we want to get the number of optics we have and do a kind of a comparison. So actually better yet, we want an index as to which one we are using. So currently we know we're going to start at the first one, so I'm going to use uint8 optic index and set this to be 0 in the constructor. From there we want to increase it. So if, uh, let's see, I don't necessarily want to increase, eh, we'll do optic index is greater than or equal to optics.num. If it is, we set optic index to equal zero again. And after that, we set the new optic. So current optic equals optics at the optic index. So we're checking and making sure we're not outside of the range of the array. And then in which case we retrieve the optic we want. So this should cycle everything for us. So once this has happened, let's go to our new animation instance. We want to then go ahead and do void cycled optic. So this is kind of like our event here to tell us, hey, we have just changed the optic that we want to use. So what we're going to do is in cycle optic, we're going to do what we did in begin play and call that relative hand transform and set site transform to switch over to the new ones. So we call set site transform and set relative hand transform. And hopefully that should carry everything over that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the editor again because we made a change to this header. And then once that's done, go ahead and open up the assets in case we need them. And let's see what happens. So I aim and I press T. And currently nothing is happening. So let's go ahead and check and see what all might be the issue. So let's find set site transform. So we get the, oh wait, no, that's for the camera. It's relative hand transform, that's my bad. So we actually don't need to call set site transform. Hey, right, I'll just leave it. So set relative hand transform. So we get the current optic, get the socket transform on it, and we make it relative. So my question is we might Let's see, print out the current and the after of the current optic. So you read log. So current optic percent s. Let's get the name, got a dereference. Let's do one for the after. And see if there's any change. Let's do our live coding. Hmm. 
so it is not changing at all. It's actually out of curiosity. Let's set current optic to be the very last one and see what it says. It seems like it's changing it. However, I'm almost questioning if it's the way that is set up, but it shouldn't really affect it. So it's not cycling through. So I'm going to print out a log and just see what goes on in here to really just start using the debugger. And we're going to check. So out of range, which that should not print. And I just realized it's because I'm not actually incrementing optic index. Because I'm an idiot. So let's increment object or er, optic index. And that should actually take care of it. So now we should be good to go. We aim, press T, press T again. As you can see, it is now changing. And we just went out of range. So it is altering and changing the optic that we are currently on. So in there it's working. However, when we come up here, this is not. So I'm almost questioning, we are calling cycle, right? No, we are not. We are not calling cycle optic. So we want to do a check. So if tutorial anim instance, we call tutorial anim instance cycled optic. And this should make the change for us. So that's my bad. So now, as you can see, we are good to go, and we can switch between all three of our optics. That is now working. So let's remove all these logs. And we are pretty much good to go. So let's comment out the call to set relative hand transform, or set site transform, because that is not needed. And let's just make 100% sure that that is the case which it is because we always have a set position in there. Now, if we we're going to make it so we have a dynamic position based upon how far we want to be away from the optic, we would then want to call set site transform. So we would use this and instead of using a fixed position, like where do we use it? Like right here where we multiply it by 30 centimeters in front, we would make this kind of more dynamic based upon a value that we set inside the optic itself. And that would make it a lot easier for us. And, well, more flexibility, so to speak. So, we do not need that. And what we're going to do in the next video is we are going to make use of interpolation to interpolate this value here. So when we go to set relative hand transform, we're going to do a check. So we're instead, let's see, where's the tick? Just like we do here, we're going to do b interp hand transform. And if that is true, we instead of setting the relative hand transform, we have another function that gets the final transform and then we interpolate to that transform. So we're going to be going from our current, which would be what our current relative hand transform is, to the new one, which would be the new site transform that we want to move our hand to, so to speak. So we're going between them like so. Anyhow, that is going to be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below. I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I will help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.